was life and his life was the light of men the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it the book of john chapter 1 verses 4 and 5 our Lord Jesus Christ, the true light, the great shepherd, the bishop of our soul, stepped down from his ivory tower some 2,000 years back to show us the way. And when he left the surface of the earth, he gave a stern warning to his beloved saints, saying, Beware, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they are devouring wolves. By their fruits, he said, you shall know them. One of the principalities of our time that all true believers need to be aware of is the man T.B. Joshua, also known as Fatai Balogun of the synagogue, the Church of All Nations. That was the voice of Bisola Johnson. A young lady who for 13 years was known as Bisola Joshua, a devotee and close associate of the so-called prophet T.B. Joshua. It was her voice that was heard the world over, proclaiming the miracles and greatness of her master. That same voice today is crying out to the world to expose the darkness, tricks, and evil manipulations of T.B. Joshua. Her story and that of the other initiates and devotees who formed the inner circle of T.B. Joshua's deceptions tell a compelling story. A story that the whole world should hear and learn from as the day of the Lord approaches. My name is Bisola. Until a few months ago, um, four, five months ago, my voice was the one you've been hearing on the Synagogue Church of All Nations videotapes, television programs, and also videos for sale. Check the, the Synagogue Church video tape one, two, three, four, five. You have listened to my voice where I ran voice over on the synagogue videos. Bisola confesses that she was lured into the bosom of the court leader when her father ran into big challenges and the family was advised to seek spiritual help. Coming from a Muslim background, they had little to offer against the machinery of deception that T.B. Joshua employed in diverting her destiny. Step by step, she was brainwashed and lured into the inner world of his disciples to become one of his lovers, a favored devotee in charge of the most sensitive apparatus of deception, the studio, editing and voice over to create the illusions that established the ministry worldwide. Sometime 14 years ago, close to 14 years ago, I came to the synagogue church. Uh, at this time, my family just recovered from a fire outbreak in our home. And at that particular time, it's like we needed God and we needed help actually my father's friend introduced him to the synagogue church uh, mainly because of my father's uh, malignant sickness he came and invited some of his children and many of them turned down the invitation Unfortunately, I will say for me, I came with him and we met a man named Ore and Ore promised linking us with T.B. Joshua and there they said we should meet with Tunji. Actually, Ore told us that uh, T.B. Joshua was aware of our 
been there. So he instructed Ore to take us to the mountain. That Tunji would give us water to drink and to bathe. Uh, we were given this kind of yellowish color water. You know, coming from a Muslim background, our experience and what we saw was really bizarre. You know, where somehow, you know, it was really strange. But we thought, well, we are crossing over to a new <laughs> religion. Probably that is the way they do their thing. So we drank the water and we bathed and we were taken back to the church. It was uh, maybe like seven or eight minutes drive between the mountain and the church. So when we go back to the church, we were there for a few more days until one day, it was very close to midnight that Ore invited us to T.B. Joshua's office. He gave us oil and he also gave us his picture. We were given both and said we should go back to Ore, that uh, we need to do confession and we had to do it in the church. So when we went back to Ore, I, I asked many questions that why do we have to go back? I mean, why do we have to be in the church but already assured us that um, the main purpose of our coming out is to be able to touch the hearts of people that you know the pastor wants people to be touched and he want them to learn few lessons but later in years we got i got to know that doing that is a way of having a record having a record on you so that whatever happens in the future you can use that probably against you or to tie you down in his in his church so you know nothing changed actually but all I realized was that in my dreams, I started seeing T.B. Joshua in my dreams. And each time I sleep, I see myself in his church. And uh, I find out that sometimes I even hear his voice audibly. So he gave us another appointment. So when we came, he said I should stay in the church, that God wants me to work for him. Well, I've been seeing myself in his church. I've been seeing him in my dreams. So it's like <laughs> nothing lost. So I stayed. He said I should go to the studio, synagogue studio. So that was where I started working, actually. One afternoon, it was a Wednesday, we were preparing for a Wednesday service, actually. So we're putting camera, batteries, lights, and everything, you know, preparing for the service. And putting videos, you know, together for recording in the service. When Brother Benga, yes, his name was Benga, rushed to the studio and called me and said uh, T.B. Joshua was calling me so when we got to his office he wasn't there so I was ushered into a a pathway into a living room so I was even scared but it's like the people you know looking to the faces of the people standing it was normal to them so I waited so after a while I was asked to go into the room so I entered into the room I looked around so TB Joshua said I should wait outside that he will call me 
So I went back outside and waited. After about seven minutes or thereabout, he knocked and somebody entered. One of the boys that worked in his uh, in his in his office entered. So he came out and called me. So when I entered, it was something else. I saw him, he was sitting down half naked. So I was even wondering, I said, ah, a prophet, you know. So he said I should come nearer. I knelt down, so he said I should come nearer. So I was taken aback because, you know, the position he was. So he said, ah, I shouldn't be afraid. I should just come nearer, that he was not going to hurt me. So I came nearer and he said, uh, he, he knew I could do it, that's why he sent me to the studio. That he wants me to monitor all the people working there. And he wants me to be giving him uh, information about them. Whatever they, they say, whatever they do, that I should, I should be free to come to him anytime. That is my father, that I should just be free, that he wants me to be comfortable that if I need anything at all, maybe money, I should come to him, I should not be afraid. The, the first time he, he saw me, he liked me, and that I should just not be afraid. That he saw that if I walked into his office, I would see a lot of girls standing there. He knew that they were not trustworthy, that's why he did not take them to the studio. The studio is his heart. That his life is that studio. So he wants me to be loyal to him. That he does not want me to betray him at all. So I was a little bit calm. Well, something got me troubled again when he said I should hug him. So, well, I hugged him. And he brought out his uh, private part that I should touch it. That he just want me to be comfortable. He want me to relax. That he does not want me to be afraid of him. So that I should just touch his private part. So I did. So he said, okay, that after service, he will see me. So I started thinking about this. I started thinking that the, it's just about the service time and this is happening. That what is really happening, that does it really mean that TB Joshua really loved me? And so I went back to the studio. I was just thinking. I was thinking. So after a while, after about 15 minutes, he sent for me again. So I went. So he was still in his room. There was no light. But uh, there was a candlelight. It was only that candlelight in his room. So he said that he hoped that I, 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 I did not forget what he told me. I said, no, I did not. So he said I should suck his penis. So that he's doing all this so that I can be free with him. That, uh, you know, that it's not that uh, he just wants to scare me or, or you know, so I did. So after all that, I went back to the studio and we went to the church. What was in my mind that day was that uh, I hope what you know we did together will not affect the the service because I you know I couldn't reconcile it. But during the service, you know. He performed what he normally performed, and uh, the service ended. And we all went back to the studio. You know, we had to preview, we had to, you know, do some editing. Around midnight, he called me again and said, you know, I hope, no problem. I said, no problem at all. So that day, he gave me 500 naira, I remember. That was the first money he gave me, 500 naira. 
So he said I should repeat what I did in the afternoon, which I did. His former disciples testified that T.B. Joshua had a harem of concubines that satisfied his wildest sexual fantasy. He used his brainwashing techniques to persuade parents to release underage girls to sign up as disciples. He had orgies and encouraged competition among the girls. He even slept with three girls from one family. They were the daughters of his former boss from the early days. There was this case of three girls of the same father and the same mother that T.B. Joshua made love with. One of the girls called Sheung have been in the same room together with T.B. Joshua and Sheung one time. T.B. Joshua said we should just be, you know, rubbing his body and rubbing his uh, private parts. At that time, Sheung was still a very little girl, maybe around uh, 14 or 15. Each time uh, T.B. Joshua would put Sheung's hand in his private part, Sheung would cover her face and say, no, 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 no. So at the time, T.B. Joshua said, I should go to my room. And Sheung was there. But uh, I don't know what happened, actually, because I have to say what I know. I don't know what happened. But at the end of the day, after some time, I see that uh, Sheung started getting more boldness and getting more matured. You can now, you can then talk to anybody, anyhow. I believe uh, T.B. Joshua must have uh, uh, initiated her. And there are lots of other young girls too. I always see that Desola and another girl called Binta normally sleep in T.B. Joshua's room. They are little girls, like 15 years. So at a time, after some time, I think uh, they left. Two of their solar sisters came to join disciple in T.B. Joshua's church. And uh, one day, I had to call their solar's uh, father and said, well, I need you to, to ask their solar some questions. And uh, the, the father was really embarrassed. Their solar opened up to her father and uh, the father was not really happy and he had to withdraw his other two children and I believe before he even withdraw them Tibi Joshua has been sleeping with them so sleeping with girls or sleeping with women so Tibi Joshua has gone beyond fun it's a, a spiritual thing I believe he anointed some white girls as prophetesses and slept with some of them Suzel from South Africa and Anika from Britain will tell more about this. 2 Peter 2 verse 19 While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. No one could ever have watched the ministry tapes of the synagogue without being touched by the great display of humility and awesome power. Miracle upon miracle seemed to validate his claim to divine authority and his prowess was noised all over the world. The simple testimony of another inner caucus former devotee, however, sheds great light on the grand deception that fooled the world. It is reported that T.B. Joshua would share this cover of meekness in the inner sanctuary to rail against all white men that held his ancestors captive as slaves. T.B. Joshua privately vowed to enslave the white world in return and revenge the humiliation of his forebears. Paul Agomo was the disciple who for many years was groomed to create the illusion of miracles by T.B. Joshua. He was the first indigenous prophet to be ordained by T.B. Joshua. I am Pastor Godwill Agomo Paul, formerly known as Prophet 
God will agomo Paul. I am very happy to testify to the work of God in my life because God saved me from the valley of shadow of death. That is the synagogue church where I spent more than 10 years and today I'm a free man. When I joined the synagogue church, I thought I have met a savior, but unfortunately for me, I didn't know I have started my journey into hell. I joined the evangelical class. My performances there took me to Ghana in the 1997 crusade. When I came back from Ghana crusade, the reports T.B. Joshua got about me and my performances there brought me closer to him. And I was advised to join the disciple by his agents. When I joined the disciples, I was surprised at what I met there. It was a concentration camp, but there is no power, no force as strong as brainwash. I was gradually brainwashed into living without eating meat without eating fish. I was gradually introduced into humiliating people. I was gradually introduced. Well, in fact, imagine such instances like a lady is being accused of committing fornication, which were all lies. And the lady was brought out before all the disciples, naked, and pepper was grinded and mixed with water and inserted into her vagina. She almost went mad. TB Joshua, would engage all known mind control techniques to keep his disciples in check. Sleep deprivation was his standard and the cruel punishments he meted out for the slightest offenses were calculated to induce fear. Snitching was the order of the day and he had the ability to disorientate the best of men. Disciples dared not converse freely for fear of punishment. Gradually, the disciples would be led into working out his deceptions to fool the public becoming tools in his propaganda machine. I was made a prophet in June 12, 1999 on his birthday. From then, the powers invested in me increased. I became a terror to co-disciples. People run away from me because I will do whatever he asked me to do. Any disciple he asked me to slap, I will slap. We were being caned with koboko, with cow tail, regularly. Without all our bags, we are filled with scars. So this is what we continued. We aided him. People were being tortured. Tortured to some extent that you cannot talk. Suffering and smiling. Before the, before the congregation, you will be smiling. But at the back of the congregation, because you cannot say anything. You have been brainwashed to believe that T.B. Joshua is the Lord. That even if you offend him in this world, you will still meet him in heaven. Prophecies were informations given to him by members. Information given to him by workers, disciples. When we get people at the gate, if you have been there before, you will see in the morning, as early as 4 or 5, people will gather at the gate. 4 or 5 a.m., people will gather at the gate. Right at the gate there, we interview people, screen them, they tell us their problems and everything. These are things, those who allow inside, these are things we will take to T.P. Joshua, and that will form the basis of his prophecy. Sometimes we will gather people and ask them to write their problems. They will write their problems and we will carry it to the old site, to one of his prayer grounds and keep it there for him. He will keep reading it. After about two to three months, he will come out, those things he read from those people's problems, he will come to predict them. He will come to prophesy them. People from overseas, the same thing. About the healing, the so-called miracles. Miracles of one, what we call miracle of crippled people. I bought four wheelchairs for T.B. Joshua in the church. What we call miracles of crippled healing, like that of Mr. Maxwell E.J., that wheelchair was bought by me. Maxwell E.J. got drunk, and when he was stepping down from his uh, story building, he fell off and hit his waist. And he had a sprain. When he came to us, we now brainwashed this man that unless he sits on a wheelchair, he will not gain the access to see the man of God. And we brainwashed the whole family. You can imagine how powerful the game of brainwash is. And you see people crying, begging him as if that, that cry, they started, they started from home. 
Why the show? Why do we need to, we have to show show the whole thing? How they are crying, begging him, Papa, please help us. All those things are manipulation. I bought the wheelchairs. That wheelchair that Maxwell used was one of the four wheelchairs I bought. There's a woman we also call Mama Jaye Jaye from a place called Bini in Nigeria. I bought the wheelchair. The wheelchair again for high scent. Well, those these four wheelchairs were being recycled among all the old people they bring. When they bring you, we bring wash you to sit on wheelchair. Are we talking about what are we talking so many things what we call cancer those things are not cancer if you want to prove this in later times when some americans came and discovered that those things were not cancers they started writing against us and we turned the name we no longer call them cancer we call them leg ulcers body ulcers no longer cancer again those things you see we bring out there are wounds some of them are wounds sustained from or oh, um, bike driving, so my accident, so my fire bones, so my so gunshots, different kinds of things. And these things are fresh, things that will heal with time. If you come to the emergency in the morning, as early as 5.30, you will see that the main cancer people are being discharged at the gate and brought in those with fresh wounds. The things you call cancer of the breast, it's not cancer of the breast. They are mostly women nursing babies. That thing is... It's, 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 it's not cancer, it is abscess. Abscess of the breast, maybe because of the pressure, because of the. That is abscess. I can explain this to you. You have to look at those pictures very well. You will see those things are not cancers, they are abscesses. What if they had also gone to a normal hospital? That thing would be removed. There are so many things we did with TB Joshua. Disciples were not allowed contact with the outside world, and the only television sets tuned to public stations in the synagogue were in his office. Joshua has a morbid hatred for all genuine ministers of the gospel. He will deride, abuse, and curse ministers while watching their TV broadcasts. The ministers in Nigeria, big, big top ministers, David Oyedepo, the redeemed pastor, Pastor Adeboye, Michael Konko, I've seen, I've seen their pictures, whereby it will, it, will, it will ask the prayer warriors to put their pictures under his shoes. You know, these are the spiritual work he normally do. And he will use, he will use the shoes to be walking on his prayer mountain. Sometimes he will be using hammer to hit on these pictures because uh, he doesn't want them to say anything negative against him. He does not want them to say anything about him. Spies with recording devices were sent into various churches to monitor those who opposed T.B. Joshua. Rejected and derided by the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, T.B. swore revenge. Using his doctor videotapes, and stage miracles as his major thrust, he convinced the nation that he was bigger than all other churches. He used us to pass wrong information. He used us to stamp against, against people, against other ministries. He sends us out into churches, load our phones. We load our phones up to 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. Inside those churches, people will be talking, whatever the pastor is talking, will be recording it, we dial a call. When we dial his number, the number will be reading in his office and these things will be recorded. So many things about T.B. Joshua. He is an epitome of deception. He is a house of horror. First John 2 verse 18 says, Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. I was a junior prophet with him. I was in Ghana. I went to Ghana because Pastor Kayode, who was there, moved out of the church, established his own Awakeners Chapel, and took away all the members. I went there because TB Joshua sent the first person, Pastor uh, uh, Prophet Ben, and Prophet Ben could not perform. Prophet Ben was giving outstanding instructions to go there and make sure that Kayode is bundled inside the boot of a vehicle and brought back to Lagos. But when Ben failed, he knew I was the person who could do it. So he sent me to Ghana. When I got there, I tried everything. I got his file from immigration, his original file. I realized that Kayoda have established a, an NGO. He has a church. He's married there. He has two children. 
So he became a natural, he became a citizen. He was he has naturalized. And he has some strong men in his church who guide him, guide him security-wise. So everything I tried failed. I was still fighting this war when Kyle himself started sending texts to members that they should ask TB Joshua what he did to the wife. That his wife, the wife he married in Nigeria, he separated them for about five years. The wife was living with Lola. The wife, Lola, Lola Peters, Lola Kayode Peters, was living with TB Joshua in the uh, disciple quarters. While, TB, while, while Kayode was living in Ghana alone for five years. More than five years. So Kayode took that opportunity because he knew what TB Joshua was doing with the wife. Kayode told everybody that TB Joshua pregnanted his wife and sent it, to him, sent it for him to Ghana. So that he wanted to prove to the world that TB Joshua is not what people think he is. And I was surprised. I came back to Lagos. I told TB Joshua, I said, this is what the man is saying. He said, don't mind him. But unfortunately, when I came back again, they said Lola had, Lola told me had become big. And surprisingly, one morning, they said, the baby, she had a miscarriage. They aborted the baby. So that the world will not know what TB Joshua has done. Today, Lola is living. TB Joshua is living. Peter is living. What about how he messes up people? People like Amokachi. Omokachi came there with problems. He has some, some, some knee injuries problems. He came there. Instead of TB Joshua helping this young man, instead of him praying for him, TB Joshua now plotted with us and told us that he wanted to convert Omokachi to the lowest disciple among us. And he did it. Omokachi never succeeded. When he, took, when he went to one club in America, he could not perform. He came back again. He was virtually living in the synagogue church with us. And TB Joshua reduced Omokachi to a common supermarket attendant. And he was recorded without knowing. Tim Joshua has made a complete documentation of Omokachi. What about Kanu Anko? Kanu entered in when he had a problem, trying to solve his problems. But you know, he didn't know that he was recorded. And that is what Tim Joshua had been parading to all great men in the world. That he healed Kanu and Kanu denied. And since he has the vision and the decision, everybody believed him. That was what he used to confuse Amokachi. That's what he used to confuse James Obiora. Even though James Obiora was a bit tough for him. I joined the synagogue church at the age of 30 and by 41 to 42 I wanted to marry and Tim Joshua said over his dead body I will not marry I now said okay my eyes opened I looked I saw that this man was not whom he said he is when we started this ministry he was telling us that see that any day he start putting the money in his, in his money in the bank account that is the God will take away his power any day you start driving a big car, that's the God who take away. But I came back from Ghana one day to meet four jeeps. The house is building in his hometown, over a billion naira have been put in it. This man has committed much havoc. Am I talking about the people he destroyed their lives? He tells people, when people come there with problems, we cancel them, especially the HIV, serious illnesses. They should not take drugs. They should keep blessing water in the name of the God of TB Joshua. And people did that. And I'm telling you, they died in their thousands. But himself, TB Joshua himself, call me tomorrow face to face, I'll tell him. He takes drug. He sends our canteen woman, Mama Mike. She will go to a cotton market and buy herbs from herbalists. And we cook. For him, he pours it. Mrs. Sigodu will buy it. They will prepare it for him and put it in the fridge. He will be drinking it. What a deceitful life! People who have toothache in the disciple in the church, he will tell them no, bless water and they don't take any drug, don't go to the hospital. But we have extracted the teeth of more than fifty disciples in the hospital. If any problem, you go to the hospital. But members are dying daily. He has caused much harm to the, this country. He has caused much harm to the whole world. What about those that come in? After he has finished them up, he will send them to their countries and they will die. Is it the people we say we are healing? The evil people? The same drug, you see they display their drugs in their present. Those drugs are not being thrown away. We pack them in. We look at them. If it is not much, we will search for them in Nigeria or the equivalents. We will mix them and put into the fruit juice they will be taken. If they spend one week in synagogue church when they go back before the next two days the problem will start and when they call to tell us the attack has started again we tell them it is their sin they should confess one of tb joshua's greatest coups against nigerian christianity was the capture of a popular young tele-evangelist called chris oyakilome the disciples recall all details of how tb joshua plotted lured and enticed the minister fooling him completely 
Matthew 24 verse 24 reads, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. What about manipulations? What about creating confusion in the Christendom? The case of Chris Oyekilome was a sample case. He gradually tripped to Oyekilome to come and visit him. He first put up a call to Oyekilome. He put up a call to Oyekilome after seeing Oyekilome on television. Oyekilome picked the call, answered it, and you know, thinking he's a, he's a good gesture, promised to come and visit the Joshua first. And when he came, we organized all journalists, all our journalists, we put camera everywhere, we recorded your Oyekilome even up to the last step he made. We want to use it to send the message across to the uh, Nigerian Christian, Christian world. We want to send it to PFN. We want to send it to Khan so that they will know if the Bishop is a demon, why then should people like Chris, whom they recognize, be his friend? TB Joshua courted the Nigerian press and has many hungry news reporters on his payroll. A lot of the reported benevolence is highly exaggerated and the press was often used as a tool for reverse psychology, printing crazy stories to lure people and by sympathy for the synagogue. T.B. Joshua's freakery became so effective that many of the Nigerian elites have become ensnared. From governors to high-level police officers, T.B. has a following that is outstanding. Presidents of nations, multi-millionaires and many international figures are among the list of his victims. James 4.4 Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Second time again we invited him when we, when we were having what they call the blood of Jesus. That was the time they brought in one man, one, 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 one Dutch man, Mr. Westerhoff. The, the man on, 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 on chair, wheelchair, because of the multiple sclerosis he had. Not that this man cannot walk. This man could walk, but he could not walk and stand for a long time. He could walk, but he could not walk for a long time. So that is why he's ready to choose to sit on a wheelchair. And this man was never healed. He was still like that. What he walked in the church, and as if he was jumping, was exactly what he did before the first time he came to us. That was the man we used to showcase. Uh, 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 when Chris came, that was the man we showcased. If you watch the video, you will see it was Chris and T.B. Joshua. T.B. Joshua indirectly discipled Chris because what happened was what he used to do. If, T. if we are praying, T.B. Joshua will stand by us and believing to, have, to, 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 to be giving us, strengthen us with power. So that was what he did to Chris. So this was what he packaged and gave to his journalists to send to the world. In conclusion, how did an illiterate half-wit Pull off such a grand deception. And I went back to Ghana. I said, Well, since things are changing, let me now, at the age of 41 plus, no marrying, because everybody, it's a taboo for you to, nobody, even if you are married, you'll be separated with your wife. If you, if you, if you are lucky, if you want to sleep with your wife, he is the person who will tell you when to sleep with your wife. He will tell those in disciples who are married and their wives are living at home and while they are in the quarters, he will tell them when to have sex with their wives, either once or twice in a year. And he will give them pass to go and sleep with their wife and come back the following morning. So if you try that without his permission, you are in trouble. That is tantamount to rebellion. You are rebellious. And you, even you will not. Where will you see your wife to sleep with? Where will you have chance? Nobody is free at a time. Everybody is monitoring everybody. So you have no, you have no one minute to, to, to hide. So things changed. If you go to Snagot Church, as I'm talking now, you will see women there, you see ladies there who joined him at the age of 15, 13, 14. He disguised all of them. He has been sleeping with all of them. They are now 35, 40. Some of them are 35 or 38. Some are 31. They are not yet married. They are just there for his luxury. He sleeps with them, does anything he likes with them till today. So when I got back to Ghana, I said, no, I need to marry. I met with a young lady I wanted to marry. She was a journalist that worked with uh, GTV, and she, she was a journalist, she's a reporter, and she worked with also with uh, Savi, the United Nations body. So I met her, 
we talked and we agreed. The father was uh, the father. The father of the girl was uh, the, the the regional minister of Volta region. A very wealthy family and good girl, educated girl. I saw her and I prayed. I said, okay, I better go home and tell TV Joshua that I've seen somebody I want to marry. When the girl agreed, I came back to Lagos. I told TV Joshua that I want to marry. Heaven was let loose. Immediately, somebody else was sent to go and replace me in Ghana. While I was in, I was incarcerated. I was kept on redundant. I don't pray again to people. People don't talk to me again. You can imagine where only me is living in the midst of more than 200 disciples. Nobody talks to me. Nobody sits with me. I was alone. He now formed different carcasses that will come to talk to me. Some will come and advise me. Why not leave this girl? Why not come back here? Papa will find you a wife. I said, how can Papa find you a wife? Has he found anybody a wife before here? Where will he find a wife? That I've decided nothing can change it. And I stood my ground. For more than three months, I was incarcerated. Nobody talks to me. I was useless. Moving around, I became depressed. When he tried and tried and tried and I refused. He had meetings because of me more than three times every day. Everything was done to stop me. I refused. And finally, at the end, he now asked me, that was in December 2004, he asked me to now invite the girl. December 31st, 2004, the girl came. The girl spent two weeks with us. And he was, he, sometimes when he was going to O-Site, he would carry the girl to O-Site and stay with the girl and talk with the girl. And I thought he was praying with the girl. When the girl came back, after two weeks, the girl wanted to go. He called us and said, okay, that I have to follow the girl and go back to Ghana. That the prophet that was already in Ghana that came to replace me, that was a prophet uh, uh, Ben, will accompany me to the father's house so that we go and see the father's and know what is the necessary things to do so that he can marry her for me. I was so happy. We went to Ghana. I went to, back to the church. The girl went back to their house. I arranged with prophet Ben. We went to see the parents, but we didn't meet the father. So they gave us another appointment in two weeks time. So we came back after seeing the mother. I came back to Lagos. It was not up to a month when they wrote me, when they called me that the girl had problem was in the hospital. I went, he sent me to go and see her. I went there from hospital there. They said she was not okay. She was transferred to Kelubu hospital. And before you know it, the girl died. I was depressed. I was, in fact, I felt like I should die. I knew something has happened. I came back to Lagos. I told him that Nana has died. And I was angry. I left him. I went back to Accra again. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to go. My brothers, my sisters, I have already disowned them. I didn't know where to start my life. When I go to Accra, I felt like I wanted initially I wanted to commit suicide. I wanted to die. But I thought of it. I said no. I didn't want to kill myself. But I wanted to die. I didn't know what to do. So one day I decided. I packed up all the whole synagogue uh, newsprints. I packed up all the whole uh, uh, cassettes, everything, including my Bibles. I said, God, I don't think you exist. You are no God. If this is what I should get as a reward of working and serving you for 11 years, I think I'd better die. I cannot. So after a lot of consideration, I now say, okay. I decided to tell within myself to move to Eburi Mountains to go and just stay. Not that I was not going to pray because I have lost confidence in God. I cannot pray for to God. What kind of God is that? I just wanted to go and stay there. But unfortunately, things change. When I got to the mountain, the first day, second day, I was still strong. The third day, I was weak. I could not control myself. I fell into a trance or a dream or whatever. I had a dream. And in that dream, I had so many things, you know. It's a long dream, you know. And after the dream, I slept again the following day. The dream started again. The third day, the dream started again. In fact, I knew that there was God. But it, I was so weak the fourth day. I could not talk. In fact, on the fifth day, I passed out. It was on the sixth, seventh day morning that I, I realized where I was. The kind of strength that entered me 
I, w- I looked at myself. I could not. I managed myself, and I roll. I was walking. I f- almost, I, I almost rolled from the mount- from the mountain top. When I came down, one of the one of the one of the uh, 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 one of the mountains, uninhabited mountains. The people don't stay there. In Eburi, I rolled down. I came down. I managed myself. I came out. I met a taxi man. I was having money in my pocket. A lot of money. I begged the taxi to take me to spin test road where I was living, Bachona. So the man took me, he took me down. When I got home, people were shocked. My gate man was surprised. I went inside. He took the, they, they helped me, carried me inside. I was so I was smelling. My body all sorts throughout my body. I was into my body was bringing out water, different different part of my body. I got home. I took a shower. And when I went through, when I went through the dream I had, that was where God told me that he was God. God showed me he was God. And I decided to come back. I confessed my sin to God. I asked for forgiveness and left Ghana to Nigeria to start a ministry, the People of God Evangelical Mission, and to start an NGO called Let My People Go, to educate the people of the deceit and the manipulations in the life of many people who call themselves men of God. There are many of them that are killing people on the ground. They have thoughts. They have thoughts. Tell me, what is there in the world that, that men of God don't have? The politicians, they have thugs. They have hit squad. Men of God, they have hit squads too. They have thugs too. We know the kind of people we have, we used to threaten Solomon Ozi in the synagogue. When Solomon, when Solomon Ozi left and was writing in papers about Timmy Joshua, we knew the type of people we were using to threaten him. We were using hit squad. Tra- Solomon Ozi succeeded. It was God that saved Solomon Ozi. If not so, you have been out of the area. We have so many things in the synagogue church. Why was the deception allowed to grow unchallenged? Is it possible? that the genuine church was also involved in some of the same tricks to a lesser degree? How many more ministers like Chris Oyakhilome did he taint with the spirit of deception? Why again were many foreign ministers deceived so easily? Was it because a renowned prophet had earlier prophesied that a global revival was to break out from Nigeria and South Africa? The rise of this Antichrist was definitely fertilized by the absence of biblical standards in the Nigerian church. The individual stories of these former disciples present a ray of hope for the true church. Not many would have the courage to confront the Antichrist the way they have done. They remain unmoved despite the death threats that they faced, trusting their lives in the hand of the Almighty God. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. Whatever you have heard or watched on this documentary is just a tip of the iceberg. Watch out for part two. The Mark of the Beast. First John 2.18 says, Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. In the first part of our documentary, Deception of the Ages, we focused attention on the rise of a Nigerian Antichrist. In this second part, The Mark of the Beast, we will be taking a closer look at the machinery of deception and the biblical warnings that were ignored in Nigeria. The Bible speaks to wise believers about the traits of the Antichrist, telling us what to watch out for as the day approaches. Revelations 13, 16 to 18. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, 
free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six the number of the beast may not work in the less educated parts of the world but his blasphemous name and his mark will communicate to even the unlearned many accredited bible scholars have wondered about the spiritual significance of the mark of the beast and we believe that a further inspection of the Nigerian Antichrist will give a clue as to what the globe should expect when the main Antichrist arises. In the early days, Fatai Balogun, also known as T.B. Joshua, will give each of his victims several occult totems to help their prayer life. This often included a picture of himself and a special marking on a piece of paper. As the fake church expanded from its humble beginnings, from a diviner's heart into the monolith it has become, T.B. Joshua cleverly retained the special markings on the prayer stickers that each devotee and general member had to possess. These mystical stickers are designed to conceal the markings an undiscerning person could easily overlook the squiggly Arabic marking in the right-hand corner of this sticker surrounding the Holy Spirit. The marabou called T.B. Joshua explained these markings as a special gift of spiritual power that God gave to him. With great daring and a total lack of conscience, Fatai T.B. Joshua invented a new thing called Miracle Administration to satisfy the longings of millions for the embrace of God's supernatural hand. That Miracle Administration has also spawned a parallel propaganda machine that will have made Nazi Germany's Goebbels jealous. From the print media to television, this scarcely educated deceiver has fooled presidents, professors, and highly intellectual bodies. One of such publications, titled Pastor W. F. Kumui and Prophet T. B. Joshua are both messengers of God, presents a clever format to compare the ministry of T. B. Joshua with one of the champions of faith, W. F. Kumui. By the time you have ingested the book, you will come away despising W.F. Kumui to revere T.B. Joshua, the great and humble healer. The authors, however, shot themselves in the foot by quoting the exploits of Prophet Paul Agomo, the former disciple that exposed the trickery behind the healings. The last paragraph on page 51 reads, in other words, like the apostles of old, such as St. Peter, St. John, and St. Paul, Prophet T.B. Joshua can anoint or baptize people with the Holy Spirit. He demonstrated this special grace on Saturday, 12th of June, 1999, when he anointed Brother Paul Agoma as a prophet before a congregation of more than 60,000 people who gathered to celebrate his 36th birthday with him. It was a historic occasion, as junior prophet Paul Agomo, immediately after his anointing, started performing miracles, signs, and wonders in the fashion of his master through the power of the Holy Spirit. Since then, three other junior prophets, namely Adequoya, Augustine, and Benson, have also been anointed in the same way by Prophet T.B. Joshua. Their propaganda book was sponsored by T.B. Joshua and written by two journalists, Isaac B. Abaji and Abiyi Kalu.
his accolades. Also in part two, the mark of the beast, we will see the testimonies of various people who were arranged in the miracle administration. This young man, Nosa Edim Wai, for instance, was paraded as a cancer case healed in the synagogue. I, I don't know how cancer is. So because I need miracle, and when you are dead, you don't you don't just say things on your own. They have to ask you to say this is what you want. They want you to say, and what they want me to say that is what is in the mad piece. So I, I don't have cancer, and I can never have cancer in the name of Jesus. Just like Hitler's Germany, the deceptions have gone to the point of no return, where even those who are no longer deceived are too ashamed to own up. But not the likes of Mr. St. Francis Ehariba, an ex-CID officer, who was also drawn into the deception and ended up funding and setting up the synagogue in Benin City. Came into the church through one uh, junior prophet, uh, Agomu, who really preached to me, who really bring me into the fold. And uh, that time I was having a series of buses. I was having money. He brought me to the welfare group of that church. At that time, there was no, no, no branch in Benin. I was going from Benin to the church in Lagos. There's no week I don't pay a hundred thousand in that Lagos to the church. That time, the church were not collecting uh, tight. He said he doesn't believe in tight doesn't believe in anything but it's we welfare that was paying everything that time i can remember a coastal bus i paid a hundred thousand to buy a coastal bus in lagos at that time and uh, we eventually all the money i carried to synagogue i was having a series of buses over 30 buses i was having on the road if now i cannot boast of a tire the size of the deception is now unfathomable but the most audacious triumph of the miracle administrators was the so-called raising of Baba Maruli from the dead. We got to know that uh, the old woman, the old man, in his condition was sedated. He was given sleeping, sleeping injection with the situation he's having. He was sedated so that he would not know what is happening in his environment. This kind of atrocities could only be perpetrated in a nation where life has little value and the government healthcare is a complete failure, leaving the masses at the mercy of charlatans. The sheer size of the deception is now mind boggling and it has now become an industry where ambitious and godless persons acquire the tools to set up false churches to sacrifice the blood of innocence to the gods they secretly worship. By the time you are through with the mark of the beast, you will not but wonder why the real church, the government, and a promising nation like Nigeria permitted such a monster to operate unchecked.